Hello, everyone. Welcome to the third episode of Food, Wine, and Whiskey in Your Own Backyard. I'm your host, Rob, and uh, uh, tonight we have... You You can call me Coach Rob, absolutely. Tonight we have uh, some guests join us. Uh, joining us, we have uh, Chris Chambers is back. We always like having Chris join us. His beautiful wife Terry is here, and my oh, whiny God. wife, my whiny wife Sandra is here. I'm not whiny. You've been whining a little bit tonight. No. And I don't mean by like drinking a lot. I of do wine. have to say that I didn't like that one episode where you said I didn't have good taste in wine. That's in episode <laughs> two, and I didn't say you don't have good taste in wine. I said. When you began drinking wine, your taste at it, the beginning. And it's now in episode three. And it's again in episode three. You brought it up, not me. But I didn't bring up the episode. You brought up the issue. You might have. Yeah. Oh. Well, <laughs> either way. Moving on. I Moving on. Moving on. my taste. So we just popped open a bottle of one of our favorite producers in Napa Valley, which is Robinson Family. And uh, what we open tonight is a 2015 estate Malbec from the Stag's Leap District. And we're going to let Terry talk a little bit about Robinson family and, and kind of her history. She's been probably going there for, I don't know, probably more than at least close to seven, eight, nine years, 10 years maybe, she'll tell us. Uh, and just kind of tell us what she likes about Robinson. Robinson Family Winery, and let me tell you, if you know us, you know we're all about the family, we're all about our tribe of, of, of parents and kids here in Katy, um, Katy being our backyard, but let me tell you, if I have to have an alternate backyard, it's going to be Napa Valley, and definitely Robinson Family is one of my favorites. They are, you know, parents and children and grandchildren who are there. Um, investing themselves into the land, into the soil, into the grapes, and, and that means love in a bottle. And, that's and, and it started off with Grandpa, right? He was the one who kind it's, of went there. And yes. It started off with Grandpa, and then his daughter married Tom. Jinx. and Tom Jenks, and they've taken it from there. And now him, his wife, and their daughters and grandchildren are the ones that are driving the force of this winery. Yeah. And they're, and, they're in the Stag's Leap District. And you cannot buy their wine unless you buy it from them. And, tell me if I'm wrong, you can't even go to Napa and get a tasting unless you're a member. Is that right. correct? Correct. Or yeah. unless you know somebody. That's hey, right. Rob, I know you. You there know you me. Go. Yeah, Rob, Chris, Rip Rutherford, yes, somebody. Sir. Somebody. Know somebody who's yeah. a member. Yep. But they are, a, they are a, a very gracious family. They're very invested, all of them. I mean, we were, we were up there in the spring in the spring and and you see the grandkids the grandkids are there the boys are coming from baseball practice coming to the vineyard to do whatever it takes are they are they picking are they sorting are they whatever it is that they're doing and it is it's precious and wonderful yeah they were there it was during the v to v the uh, vintner to vineyard tasting and we were there and they had a big pizza oven and the kids showed up straight from baseball practice and next thing you know they're serving pizza at everybody I mean, it was, it was phenomenal. Just and and we were there as recently as this February, and they still have the pizza oven. And they were telling us once they, uh, they kind of got into a little bit warmer weather and the vines started kind of turning green again, they were going to start firing it up and have people out yeah. and start doing some tastings out, out back and, and enjoying some pizza. So that's really cool. But the reason we wanted to open this one up is because we like to open up uh, bottles and talk about – the boutique vineyards, the, the small little places in Napa that maybe you don't hear so much about. And honestly, tell me if I'm wrong, guys. Uh, you can't buy Robinson anywhere, can you? No, you no. cannot. So being a member uh, at the winery is, and in their wine club is the only way you're going to get to try this. Or, as I said in the last episode, become friends with me and Chris. And if we like you, we'll open a bottle and let you try it. And it's really freaking good. Mm-hmm. Um what we open tonight is a 2015 uh, Malbec, and Malbec is become or has become one of my favorite grapes. Uh, my wife will also tell I you. I love a good Malbec. So, what do you love about a Malbec, Sandra? Well, you're just, Crickets. What do you? What you're do you love? Putting me on the spot. I just well, love the taste, the finish, the feel of the whole Malbec wine. I think it's not. To me, For on the me, nose, it's not as st- 
strong. It's very it's not nice and face. subtle. Traditionally, it's, it's nice and subtle. An, it's more of an earthy. Yes. It's, it's more of an earthy grape than a Cabernet Sauvignon. It's not traditionally grown in Napa, but they have, have been doing it very well recently. And, I mean, even Camus started bringing their grapes. They freeze their grapes, and they bring them over in a crate from South America. And that's where they made the, the schooner. And they call it the Voyage the Voyager. series. Mm-hmm. So they have Voyage 1, 2, 3, and I think they're up to 7 now mm-hmm. uh, for 7 years of actually doing that process. But uh, Robinson, w- when you go, uh, it's a small vineyard. How many acres would you say? Maybe maybe 60, 80 acres, something like that. Something like that it's yeah. not a lot of uh, land. Uh, they probably produce 5,000 cases a year, maybe? At, maybe. Maybe? Maybe, not even that. But we will absolutely say what they do put out is uh, really Special. good wine, quality stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what I like about going is when you go and you do do a wine tasting at their place, it's a small, intimate place. And when you do the, the, the wine tasting, it's with one of the Robinson family members. It's not somebody else who comes up and it's represents It's mom, them. dad, or one of the yeah. daughters. A lot of times you go to these, you know, other wineries, these, you know, bigger commercial wines, if you will. Uh, you know, they hire people, and I get it. They're a big company. They're, they hire staff. They come in. They do that for you. When you go to these boutique wineries, and specifically Robinson, when you do a wine tasting with them, it's one of the Robinson families. It's one of the girls, or it's the dad, or somebody's going to do that tasting with you. And I think that's great that you get to sit down and, and drink a glass of wine with them and ask questions and get answers from people who are actually, you know, fingers in the dirt making that wine and they telling you how they do it. They make you feel part of the family. Yeah. Just to butt in, uh, Robinson is a 78-acre 78, estate okay. property. I thought it was between 60 and 80. Mm-hmm. It's a yeah, small so place you're, up there. You're spot on right here. Yeah. Yeah. So that's one of the things I take away when I've only been there once, you know, the one time. But that's what I took away that I really enjoyed in in comparing that experience to going to other wineries in Napa. That, you know, meeting with the actual producer and people who make the wine and have that kind of final say of what goes in the bottle is really, it's cool, it's unique, and and it it really kind of helps enhance the experience of of that tasting there, I what, think. What I liked about the tasting over there in Napa was that she took us down, she took us to some of their old cellars where they showed us some of their wines. Oh, yeah. You made oh, me feel, it's a very awesome personal yeah. and intimate. Everything uh, the grandfather collected. Right. Yeah, we're talking about it. We actually took pictures. She was nice enough to let us. She just asked us not to put it on social media. But, uh, of Opus One. but we're, we're talking about it, and it was a... It's a badass collection. It's pretty cool little. I mean, you're sitting in this wine room doing this tasting, and she says, "Do you want to go down into the cellar?" And we're like, "Okay, cool. Where where are we going?" Well, of course you do. And you th- you think you're leaving the room and going somewhere? It's just a room. No, the bookcase opens like you're in some mansion in a secret. Yeah, and down this little yeah, you go down and but before you you, you go about twenty yards or not even twenty yards, twenty feet, and then to the right is where you see this huge wine library of all of this old wine that their family has collected over all these years when you look at the place i i think you're really going into the hills of that they have carved out for this cellar because it is absolutely you wouldn't even think looking at the place that it has a cellar as big as it does or as old as it is it's i didn't even know it was there behind that bookcase And, and if you look at the bottles in there it is truly the history of the napa valley now because talk about they are in there. Yeah, talk about because it does. It ties into Opus One. Well, but all the other wines that that have that have come over the years, over the probably the previous forty years, are in that since Napa before Napa was even Napa. Yeah, it, it, that's in that cellar. Those bottles before Chateau Montalena won and Stag's Leap won the Paris the, the the tasting in Paris. All those bottles are in that cellar. Yeah, yes. it's an amazing thing to see. So they were just farmers at the time, and and it, it well, became. Well, they still are. They and still I are. and I, that's what I like about these boutique wineries is that you know that they are farmers, they not all, just mass you, producers. We farm, we're farmers. We're farmers. Yeah. But I've and probably been to over the past seventeen years. I'm going to say a hundred wineries. I've never seen any collection that was the history of Napa like that one. 
Yeah, if other places have it, they don't show it to you. So what's really cool is Robinson shows it to you. They do. Yeah, really cool. They are, they are transparent. Their collection. Mm-hmm. Right. And yeah. they're all so gracious and so wonderful. And all of the Robinson family wines, other than the, they have a Great Leg series, but oh. all the Robinson family wines are all estate grown. Yeah, and the Great Legs 100%. are over in uh, Combs. Coombs Vineyard. Coombs Vineyard. Coombs, okay. Coombs Vineyard. Yeah, that's, that's where that series but is, all the, is grown. The Robinson family, everything is estate grown. So whatever they grow, that's all they get that year. Yeah, and it, it's fantastic stuff. Um, well worth the pick. So we're drinking the 2015 Malbec. And again, my wife, am I lying, Sandra? One of your favorites, a Malbec? One of your favorites, a Malbec. Oh you yes, yeah. one of the yes, I love a Malbec. Yeah. I'm like, what are you? Sorry, everybody. About? She's she's on. We're on our third I've bottle. Had Squirrel. A lot yeah, of wine. third bottle yeah. and. Uh, no, Malbec is one of my favorite I'll type of wine. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> so, just so everybody knows, when me and Chris do this, just him and I, we really flow very well. We get along, and this is a test run for the girls. And I don't know, Sandra, you're doing okay, but they we'll see. They float very well. Yeah, we'll see how you're doing. On my to- I don't know. toe-tails. Terry does really well. <laughs> No, you're doing great. So Malbec, one of your favorites? One of my favorite type of wines, yes. And would you say Robinson Malbec is right up there? Yes, absolutely. Okay. So love, what love. do we think about this wine, guys? Right on the nose. I love it. Well, how, how do you not? I mean, oh. earthy. It is earthy, vibrant. but you still get some. Vibrant. Some... That's a good word. That's Vibrant's a very good, a good word. word. It, is, it is earthy. It's not. Super earthy. It's not, not fruit forward tr- like a traditional. No, cat. not fruit forward at all. No, it's earthy. But you still get the fruit. I get a lot of dark fruit. I mean, I still get. Oh yeah. No, no, no. You do. The dark it's cherries just, and. But it's not overbearing. No, not at all. Yeah. It's not like subtle. when you open a typical Napa cab. That's it's just very boom, fruit. fruit bomb. Fruit. This is not that. Correct. No, it's not overbearing. No, no. not you overbearing. You get fruit, earth, all. subtlety. You get it all at the same time. So I really, I really like this on the nose. I mean, it's. But to find somebody like, that does a traditional Napa blending grape, like a like a Malbec, it's a blending grape in Napa. Yes. But to find them doing it well, like I mean, even as good if well, not better than they do in South America, is phenomenal. But let's be honest, it's a blending grape in in France. I mean, when you talk about French wines, it's it's about Cab and it's about Merlot and the same thing, Malbec and Petit Verdot and. Cab Franc or blending grapes there. So what they've done to be able to get these grapes to stand on their own and be as good as they are, I mean, I love it. I think South it's South America, fantastic. they grow well because of the climate. Yeah. It's kind of like Texas wines. You got to, you know, what grows great in Texas? A Tempranillo, which you, it's hard to grow anywhere else other than Spain. Right. Because of gotta, the climate. You got to go with the climate. Yeah, the climate. It's, it's very similar Spain so Tempranillo equals hot-ass humidity. Yeah, it, it holds Pretty up much. in hot-ass humidity. You can do it in a regular climate, but it holds up better in hot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Houston's a place. Hot-ass hot humidity. No, hot-ass humidity. Texas is hot. <laughs> so what are the characteristics of a Tempranillo grape? Hot-ass humidity. Malbec. We were, but you went off on. No, so no. I'm just trying to follow along. Sorry, I go on tangents. <laughs> so what else about Robinson? Can you guys have been there way more than we have? They're just so. they're they're good people. They're good people. They have good wine. It, good property. It's just you can't go wrong with Robinson. I mean, you just you just can't. Not the people. Not the dirt. Not the grapes. Not the, the the scenery. It's beautiful. It's just all around top notch. Yeah, it's, what it's I. Like, it's like in, in the last episode we did, I talked about the experience. It's about how you feel when you're there. You can go to a winery, and I've been to a winery. I won't mention the name. They're very pretentious, they're just basically snobs. And I don't care how good the, winer, the wine is, you're going to have a bad taste in your mouth when you leave. But if you go to a place that's friendly and warm and caring and treats you like part of their family yeah. and they have badass wine, you're going to remember that for the rest of your life. And you're going to you're going to keep going back to that. Absolutely. I totally agree with that because when we went there and you it's not a big 
place. Mm-mm. It's a very small place. They're letting you into their home. Exactly. Mm-hmm. You're going into their living their, space. Right. It's not a big factory or anything like that. Not anything against no. big factories or mass-produced wines. But they have this place, is but this a is, small yeah. place that you cannot find at just Mm-mm. in any liquor store or anywhere. It's something that they grow and they take care of and they nurture and they uh, love and put everything into growing these grapes. And it's wonderful when you go over there and you see this small place and they make fabulous wine. Mm -hmm. And And I think that's what makes them special. Honestly, had we not gone to the Stag's Leap Vineyard of Vintner, there's no way we would have even ever heard of Robinson. But we got to go there and we were so overwhelmed with what we saw. And there's a bunch of them like that. I mean, there's that are open to the public. There's them. There's Taylor. Mm-hmm. There's Malt. <laughs> Taylor. There's, I mean, there's there's several. Um, Ilsley, Baldacci, a bunch of them that you don't ever hear Stelzner. about. Stelzner. That you don't ever Stelzner. hear about. Oh, Stelzner. I love Stelzner. Hi, Allison. Um, that... You don't ever hear about unless you do something like that because they're not open to the public. Even when you go to Napa, you pull everything up and you're going to go pick your your wineries to go to. You can't. You got to have. They don't even show up. They They don't don't. show up as an option. No. And that's what I think I liked about our first visit. Not only knowing you all and all the everybody else who has been to Napa and giving us suggestions, but you want to venture off the commercial type wineries. You want to go to the small unknown wineries you may like it and then you may not but you may discover a nice gem that you've never heard of and love their wine you know that which is what we have found when we've gone and you all found robinson which you introduced us to robinson and we love robinson well we joined robinson because we like it so much and and robinson you know they don't make a, a tremendous amount of wine like we said earlier uh, they do a Cabernet Sauvignon, uh, and, you know, Chris mentioned in the, in the Great Lakes series, uh, they do a Syrah, they do a Cab Franc, and a Cabernet. But they also do, you know, uh, a Reserve Cab, a Cab Franc, um, they do a Malbec, a Merlot, uh, they do a Petit Verdot. Okay, so their Cab Franc, let me just interrupt you, their Cab Franc is amazing. <laughs> yeah, he had one the other night. <laughs> it's absolutely amazing. I opened one and drank one the other night. One of my I favorites. I huge Cab Franc fan, and it's really hard to find people that do it well. Mm-hmm. Now, here's what I haven't had, but we've got a few bottles in the fridge, is their Sauvignon Blanc. Oh, yeah. Oh, you, you guys have had, had it? Okay, oh, we haven't yes. had it. We bought a few bottles. We ordered it. It's back in, oh, it's so in the fridge. Oh, love a bottle totally clean from that. Yeah, so we need to open up one of those pretty soon, but... Reynolds family is definitely one that we want to tell, you know, our people and Katie. Robinson. Excuse me. I said Reynolds family. Reynolds that was, was last episode. That was another one of our favorites. Robinson is definitely one of our favorites and one that we wanted to uh, tell all of our, our friends out in Katie and, and the Houston area that if you haven't had their wine, I know it's, it's hard to get, but it's worth uh, finding somebody who has access to it or just getting on their website and... Uh, Ordering a bottle or two and that would be uh, trying it out. RobinsonFamilyVineyards.com. RobinsonFamilyVineyards.com. Go to the website, order a bottle or two, and uh, or twelve. If you order twelve, you know, message me on Facebook. Yeah, and, please mention uh, us. We'll cook for you and we'll drink some of that Robinson. But definitely go check it out. Try a bottle. Let us know. Give us some feedback. Let us know what you think about it. Uh, we appreciate you listening listening to us here on. Uh, uh, food, wine, and whiskey in your own backyard. And uh, we're going to be right back, and we're going to talk a little bit about Napa Valley. Open a great bottle. Welcome back to Food, Wine, and Whiskey in Your Own Backyard. Uh, we've got Sandra Clark, my lovely bride here, Terry and Chris Chambers. We just finished up talking about Robinson and how much we really enjoy their wine. Now we're going to move on to just Napa in general. Terry's giving me a look. What's the look? Say it. What's... We're, we're doing this again? Yeah, we're doing this I again. I was like off the hook. No, no, no. So we just finished up about Robinson. Now we're going to move on to Napa in general. And I'll tell you that we have a little input and a little say because we've been in Napa one time. One so we time. have a, a little 
thought and kind of how you should do it and what we learned and, and go from there. Um, Chris and Terry, how many times have you been? 10, 10, 11, 11. Yeah, over Wait, a 15, 17 year 17, period? So Bryant is about to be 19 and we went right before he turned two, so 17 years. So let's talk a little bit about people in, in Katy or Houston that are listening to us that go, never been to Napa, but I want to plan a trip. I want to go. <clears throat> to me, the first thing that, that stands out for me is when me and Sandra went to Napa, we thought, you know, oh, how, how nostalgic to stay in Napa. We got to stay in Napa. Oh, oh, no. That was a mistake. No. Yeah, first lesson we learned. Stay north, Calistoga yes. being as far north as you can go. Stay north. And the reason we say that is when you go to Napa, you know, you get all the people who are working and doing all those things. You can, they're going north in the morning and then coming south in the evening. And why are you giving me that look? We are, I know what time it is. It's 11 o'clock at night. We've got wine in the bottle. And we are filming a show or, or making a show. So here we go. So what you want to do is you want to stay in Calistoga. You want to stay north so that you come south early in the morning and you hit those wineries going north so that when everything closes at 4 o'clock, you're where you want to be. You can go out and enjoy dinner. You can have some wine at your place and do all that. Terry, what are your thoughts on that? Well, you want to make sure you get a good night's sleep. Yeah, being in bed by midnight is the number. <laughs> no. No, uh, no, it's not. What's the number? 8 o'clock. You want to be in bed by 8 o'clock. Well, you're going to be in bed by 8 o'clock because here's the thing. In Napa, you start drinking at 9 a.m. 10. Okay. No. No, 9. There's, there's, not some, not. there's some wires open at 9 if you know if you know us. Or if you're having something with breakfast. We've known you or 10 years, and why do we not know that? Uh, you know, Bloody Mary or a mimosa Bloody in the Mary morning. Mary with breakfast, you're starting early. We did have that. We did have that but in Cal State. Some wires open really early. So here's the thing. You know, there's a time change. Mm -hmm. And so you that's the first thing you have to adjust to is you got to you, – you hit it early, you hit it hard, and you're in bed by 4. Because the, the typically most of the wineries either open at 9 or 10, but they all close at 4, maybe 4.30. There's a, some, some five. Five. there's a couple that close at 5 30 and you got to know who they are because they're the last ones you hit pretty much go. every day mary vale mm -hmm. okay <laughs> so know that you're going to plan your trip around you know 9 30 9 9 30 to 5 5 30 you're going to be at wineries i learned the hard way pack a snack pack a snack and maybe two to three depending on what you're going to do at that winery two to three wineries a day Hey. If you're going to no. take a tour. Are you touring? If you're taking a tour, you no more than two tours a day. In? Yeah. I mean, it just depends. But if you're just popping in, sky's the limit. Right. If because you're setting a tasting or a tour, I four is probably the max. Oh, no, I no not even max. I would say three would be I'm packing one tour three or two and three tastings. Max. Well, okay. Yes. There's a, very, there's a big difference between a tour and a tasting. Yes. yes. And a pop-in. Right. And you've got to cultivate your day based on one thing. I, so pick your one thing. Is your one thing a very specific tasting that you want to do? Is your one thing a tour that's going to take two hours? You've got to cultivate your day around one thing. So pick one thing for that day and then cultivate the rest of your day around it. I agree with that. I think you have to at least do a tour if you've never been to Napa or anything like that. A do tour, at least one tour is a day. Fabulous, because I know when we went, we did one tour, and it took a good chunk of our time. And then do you have to, some places you have to set tastings uh, appointments with. Correct. A so lot of them now you require, want to, require appointments. And if there's a certain winery that or wine that you like and you want to try, or there's one that you've never heard of and you want to try and you have to set a, time, a tasting, you want to do set that appointment, make sure you get that in. Okay, I would agree with that. And what are um, some of your favorite wineries to visit in Napa? Uh, this podcast is not long enough for that. Okay, give me your top five wineries that people in, in well, Katie slash. Are you, are, so, well, hang on a minute. Are you, are you asking us for, because here's the thing. So you've got your, your pop-ins, you've got your tours. You've got oh your, yeah, you've got to you've figure got your that nostalgia. out. Which is has a good tour. I mean, there's, which there's, that's a, I, I'm going to base. I'm going to base it this way. I'm going to say 
that, you know, maybe I drank their wine or maybe I haven't drank their wine, but wine being the reason I'm going in. Rigucci. That I, I go, oh. I've never been to their winery, but I love drinking their wine, and I want to go have a glass on the vineyard where they make the wine. So it's about the Rigucci. wine. Rigucci. Schaefer. Okay, okay Schaefer. Hot? Robinson. And Schaefer is one that you can buy some of their wine here, the 1.5. You can get uh, the TD9. TD9. Yeah, yeah, you can get the TD9 and the Relentless at HEB now. The Relentless and uh, the 1.5 at HEB, Correct. too. Correct, 1.5. Yeah. Yeah. Great wine. Side select, you cannot. I like okay. Trefethen just because I thought when I went there, they made you feel so comfortable and... Trefethen is awesome. And nice. Well, Tref- and it's very historical and beautiful. Yeah. Oh, Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Because here's the thing is, if, if I'm going to send you there, I'm going to send you there because, yes, their wine is good, but their people are gracious. Oh, and their, wow. their their land is beautiful, and the experience is memorable. Turnbull. It is. <gasps> Hands down. Turnbull. Uh, every year we go, we've been 10, 11 times over the last 17 years. Turnbull is... Our first stop. Our first stop. Every year, traditionally, it's like a, a thing with us now and we didn't go to turnbull no their wines are so good i like their wines heather wines just didn't go to them and they have a lot of wines that you can only get there and the wines you can only get there the fortuna and the leopoldina calves are phenomenal but it's really beautiful there but they're so they have all this artwork and they they interchange it they're very um local driven Mm. and they're very that's what i like i like that and it's just, it's so pretty. It's so beautiful. The people are wonderful. Turnbull is awesome. Trefeth and I loved, and if you go on a Trefethen Thursday, they have Throwback Thursday on Thursdays. So it was really cool. We went in on Thursday, and they opened, uh, like, I think it was a 1981 Chardonnay that was just awesome. And oh. everybody got to try a little bit of that. So it's pretty cool. Trefeth um, is very, they're very gracious hosts. We went yes, one they year. are. Janet Trefeth sent us to Must- Bo- Bottega. 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 Michael, Chiar- um, Michael Chiarello's restaurant. Um, it sent us there, and they were just, it was it was so delicious. But they're just, they're very gracious. It's very wonderful. It, it, they're very, um, at Trefethen, their buildings are so historical, and you just walk I around, know. and you're in awe of your surroundings. It's great. Now, if you want to go somewhere that you're in awe, uh-huh. I'll tell you the two places we wanted to go and we ended up going was one was Del Dotto at the original Del Dotto with the so caves. So that is one place we have not been, but I've heard it is absolutely incredible. It's fantastic. We made the mistake of going there for our first, first thing tasting, on the 10 morning. in the morning, <laughs> and we learned quickly that that was a mistake. No, Do it, yeah. And the last one, and, and you're wondering why does not he that say that? it's not a bad winery. It's, no, it's a great winery, but uh, they're very gracious with their wine with meaning. their pores very generous oh yeah generous you, you very generous they're working hard to get you drunk they're oh, trying, no, they yeah, are making well, an effort they, they are, are making an effort drink the more you buy yeah well that's what they think and it, I think it may and have it, they, they don't they're lie yeah. they're not wrong so what they do is it's a really cool tour it's all through their caves so you're you're in nothing but their wine caves and what i really liked about it was they would harvest a grape, whatever that grape would be, uh, either a Merlot or a Cab or whatever it was, and they put it into a French oak barrel, and right next to it, an American, American. oak barrel. So every time you tried it, you got two tastings because they wanted you to compare oh. how a grape would be different aging in different, different oak. Right. And it was really, really cool, and you would think, well, there can't be that much difference. They are. There's a significant difference yeah. based on the barrel that it ages There's in. a big difference. I didn't think there would be, but there is. Yeah, huge difference. difference. So Del Dotto was really, really cool. We really enjoyed that. Great experience. Um, the other one would be um, Chateau Montalena. Oh, just because of the history of Chateau history. Montalena. Yeah. Uh, and the place is beautiful. Mm-hmm. The it's, wine is good, too. I mean, it's fabulous. The sh- but it's a combination of all of those things. You know, wine is a memory. Yes. Wine, wine is good, and wine is a, a tasting, but wine is a memory. What are you creating when you open that bottle? Absolutely. What, what do you remember when you first had it? What, what, do you, what did you see? What did you feel? Who were you with? Absolutely. All of these things combined are what makes a good wine. Mm-hmm. I agree. It's not just the no wine it's not just the grapes in the glass no i know i totally agree with you and i would only but add the grapes in the glass are very important 
Mm-hmm. They help a lot. Yeah. But also, the only thing I would say, the people you're with. The oh, people, absolutely. Yeah. The people yeah. you're oh, with, yeah. the Hands people who made the everything. The thing I love about wine and food is that it's all about getting people together and being able to share yeah. those experiences with your friends and, and doing I mean, things like that. Some of the best times I've had in Napa were at Fisher. Fisher Vineyards, which I love Fisher. Stelzner. Stelzner. Oh. Barnett, Barnett Vineyards. Yeah. Or stopping for a picture at Chateau Boswell because somebody wanted to stop for a picture because it's a little me. castle. No, it wasn't you. It was Tracy. Thank you for oh, Tracy yeah. Rutherford. <laughs> and so we stopped for a picture, and Eric decides to go in and just chat with somebody. Well, it's a private place. They're not set up for a tasting for 30 minutes, but if y'all want to come in and have a tasting, sure. Thousand dollars later, I leave. <laughs> so yeah, that's the most expensive picture I've ever taken in my life. Thank you, but Tracy. But that is the memory of Napa. Absolutely, the love of Napa, where they just oh. take you all in and your family. It he doesn't was. matter like, who you are. I don't are. have a tasting for thirty minutes. You know, come on in. You want to try something? Well, sure. they're not. Well, yeah, you go to Steltner, and you have you know. Father Steltner that says, oh, come have some wine with me and let's talk mm-hmm. hunting. Yeah, Dick Steltner sitting there with me and Rip talking about hunting the whole time while the girls are I mean, all over just, by the pool. See, yeah. that's awesome. Those are memories you just you can't get. And it I'm pouring him wine. I'm getting his vintage library wines and pouring him wine. And yeah. meanwhile, when our daughter got married, we bought 10 cases of Steltner Sauvignon Blanc to that's serve right. at the wedding. That's right. And, and that's it how important it was to us. Yes. Chris, didn't you get to sit down, you and Rip, with the Schaefer family and have some wine? I did. We went to the Vita V dinner, and it was at Ragushi, and the wineries there were Ragushi, Schaefer, Taylor, and who was the other one? I don't even remember. Oh, uh, Stagsley. And I got to have two of my favorite wines, Stagsley and the Katie Melise, and Schaefer Hillside Select, and we were sitting in a table with us and Doug and John Schaefer. And John Schaefer was in between myself and one of my buddies, Rip. And he sat and told stories for three hours. And that was the most wine I've ever drank in one night. And I was enthralled with listening to stories of the history of Napa. It was one of the most amazing. It was the most amazing night I've ever had in Napa. John yeah. Schaefer was... Pioneer. Uh, yes, that's that's a. He was a pioneer in Napa. Excellent word, a pioneer in Napa, with Hill, Hillside Select being his signature wine. Yeah. But growing grapes on the hillside and being a Napa, putting Napa on the map. He is also the one that fought to make Stag's Leap its own Appalachian. Yes. Oh, is that right? Yes. That okay. Is, did yes. not know that. One yes. of the ones that so, the whole, so that was before 1973? So that was the whole Vineyard to Vintner that we go no, to. No, no, no. That was after that. It was after that. Yeah. Okay. And this V to V that I'm we go to the, is the... I'm talking about the Appalachian, not the winery. Right, right, yes. right. I'm talking about the Appalachian. I didn't realize it wasn't an Appalachian until after that. He bought part of his uh, vineyard from one of the stag leaves. Oh, okay, okay. Cool. Apostrophe S or S apostrophe? S apostrophe. The no. apostrophe war we'll talk about in a later episode. Yeah, Absolutely. No, John was John was I mean just gracious and kind and had such wonderful stories and Doug was hysterical and a smart ass and fit in so well with our group and we had such a wonderful time with the Schaefers and the Ragushis and What happened the next morning? That was um, What happened the next morning? I don't know what happened the next morning. When we showed up at Ragushi? Oh, well, that was a couple days later. Um, <laughs> we Not the up. next morning. So there's up. a whole no, that day that went by. That was Sunday. We showed so up at Ragushi Chris slept for a, for a while. And we said something about, oh, we were at the dinner. And she's like, oh, we remember y'all. She goes, your table drink more wine than anybody. And said, well, of course we did. That's how Texas rolls. That's right. Go big or go home. So We did both. Oh, there you go. You the, did us proud. <laughs> did Texas proud. The other thing we discovered in our only trip to Napa this past February was there's great food in Napa. Oh. Oh. And you all 
one of the places you told us to go, and we, we finally took a little while to get there, but we finally made our way. Was Gott's Roadside. Gott's Roadside. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah, baby Jesus. Yes, Gott's Roadside is mm-hmm. fantastic. Gott's and the recommendation Roadside. from Chris and Terry was the seared tuna burger. Yes. The ahi tuna burger. Ahi tuna burger. Uh, black, black and white, and white shake. shake. Yes. Mm. And then we had, which was the burger, Chris? We had a burger. The blue cheese burger. The blue cheese burger. Order of fries. You had the sweet potato fries or the rosemary no, fries? The sweet potato fries. fries. We, had the, fries. Oh, we had the garlic fries. fries. Yeah, the garlic fries. I thought the garlic fries. So when fries. we started going, it was Taylor's Refresher. Back in the day, a bazillion years ago when we started going, Taylor's Refresher, and we still call it Taylor's, but Gott, um, the Gott brothers, Joel Gott being one of, I don't know the other brother's name. Um, but Duncan. But, okay. Uh, see, you're too smart. Um. The Gott yeah. Brothers bought it, and now it's Gott's Roadside. Now, they used to own this little little grocery. Palisades Market. Yes. See? I love him. At, in Calistoga. <laughs> and we stayed in Calistoga, and we'd always go to Palisades Market and get these homemade ding-dongs. Ding-dongs. Yeah. Oh. We saw that on the Food Channel, and the first time we went to Napa, we had to they homemade literally made ding homemade dongs ding dongs. On the food That's with the chocolate grenache. I can't yeah. even tell you. Did they still have but that? But the God no. Brothers, let me tell you, it's no. been gone for like but two years after we went the first time. The God Brothers, they're they're tuned into something smart because they've had things in Calistoga and Napa, and now they got Savignon Taylor's. Blanc. Yeah. Oh, that's them. That's them. That's, them. that's Joel Gott. <laughs> Okay, okay. Oh. If you've ever had Got oh, wine, yeah, 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 yeah. Joel Got Sauvignon Blanc. I didn't know they did one wine of the top too. Top 100 wines last year. Okay. They, they, yeah, they do it all. They do the food. The they do the wine. They do the yeah. So now Got oh. is roadside is exactly that. It, it's it's right on the roadside. On the roadside. It's literally a burger stand. You walk up and order, and then you go sit at a picnic table. Yes. And it's right on Highway um, 29. 29 going up. Yeah. And. I mean, it's, it's... And you can get great wine there, too. And you can get wine, and now they have beer. I don't know if they had beer when yeah, you guys... Beer. Yep, they, they have beer. But, um, yeah. And it's just patio seating, but it's just cool. It's just, you know, you've been out, and you've oh, been Rob, hitting it's wineries. it's not a patio. It's just a yard. It is just a yard. I call it a patio because it's covered now. Part of it. They have yeah, part of it covered. Okay. Yeah, so... I'll give uh, you that. So, you, you know, you just get your food. They call you. You go pick it up. You sit down. You enjoy a little food as you're going in between um, wine tastings you and got, things like that. you got to layer. You do have to lay. You, you know, you got some wine. You need some food. You need some carbs and some. And where else yeah. you can get food is that grocery store. Well, no, let's talk about that. Oh, if you're grocery. you're gonna get snacks for all day long, where do we go to get snacks? Oh, Oakville Grocery. Oakville Grocery. Oakville, Oakville Grocery. We didn't go there and get breakfast. Actually, that's what we did. We, we didn't have the breakfast. grocery. The breakfast. Thing. We didn't breakfast have breakfast. Sandwich. Oh, get some breakfast sandwiches. Okay. Let me tell you. We got some so snacks. So we'd go there and get some breakfast, and then we would, you know, drink a lot. And then we would go to taste Taylor. a lot, I'm sorry, taste God, a lot, and then get some more food, and then we'd go drink some more, and then we would go back to Oakville and get some stuff for dinner, or or somewhere Dina Deluca or somewhere. Dina Deluca. Uh, you would get Lisa Tui. Lisa Tui is another place. Somewhere to take food back Fabulous. to the house. Fabulous. Yeah. We'd go and we would yeah cook it. I love the food at Lisa Tui. Oh yeah. The food was their good. deli is wonderful. It's, it's, a great, it's a great environment. It, they got the picnic tables outside. You can yeah. buy some stuff, make some sandwiches, little have a little picnic drink basket some wine. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Great place. Lisa Tui. That's Agreed. a good place. So if you're going to do a nice dining experience, French Laundry? We've done that once, yes. and it was incredible. It, it is absolutely impeccable. It, but it, yeah. I mean, I'm just gonna leave it at that. It was a great, it was a great experience. It, and, and, and we're, we're, we're you, you hear this hesitation and everything once, once. because it's expensive, right? Once. Is that fair enough to say? It is correct. Fair. It's a once. pricey restaurant. He has a tear down that's just as good. Bouchon, amazing, amazing. Bouchon Bakery, holy crap! You got to go there in the morning and get anything for breakfast. Yeah. But we're really when we go. We typically, because we mm-hmm. usually get a house, which agrees with us, we cook a lot. We do, I mean, you can just... We do a nice lunch. We did Bottega yeah. for lunch, which yeah. is Michael Chiarello's place. Bottega's wonderful. We did Cindy's Backstreet Kitchen for lunch. At the beginning, we used to go to Cole's Chop House for dinner, yep. which was great. 
Um, but now, generally, after the end of the day, with so much wine, we just go back to the house. You just house. want to go back and do we, a lighter we, dinner. We take food with us. Yeah, cook something or, or just put something together. But open a bottle that you bought. Eating because there's. I what mean, was the pizza place we used to go to? Trevenia Pizzeria. Yes. Still there. It's still there. It was on, it was yeah. started by Michael Chiarello. Oh, okay. It's still there. It's really good. Right, right across from Maryvale, which is open till five thirty. We do love Maryville because they're open later than any other winery in Nashville. Yeah, we actually stopped there because you guys told us about that. And we did do dinner the last mm-hmm. time we went at Morimoto oh. when we first got there. In downtown Napa. In downtown yes. Napa at on the river. And we the actually met Morimoto. We're incredible. See, that's pretty cool. We, oh, it, was, it was pretty cool. Yeah, we that's pretty cool. We did not go to Morimoto. We did not go to Morimoto. It was really good. Um, but we do a lot of, but again, we're kind of, you know, we like to do our own food. Right, and it, there, and that's great. You got a big house, and you got well, friends, and, and, and it's a lot easier to do great, that. I mean, with. they're big on you know, they do local production because it's so farmers. You get, yeah, you can get great um, produce, you can get great meat, and you can do your own dinner. Right, and we generally and rent. And you our, don't have to. We eat rent out. a driver for the day. You know, we have a always car. Big always plus. rent a driver. Big. Driver. So we just rent a driver to drive our car, and Thank we do everything, know. and then we get our food, and we go back to our house, and we're done. That's a big thing, renting a driver, because oh, you're yeah. drinking a lot. We want to be safe. Be responsible. Be responsible. And be responsible, yes. And this way you can just enjoy yourself. You don't have to yes. worry about it. Just go enjoy yes. yourself. We love our driver. We get the same driver every year. I will tell you this, that when you go to Napa, in my opinion, you guys tell me if I'm wrong. Manage your group. Don't make your group too big. And the reason I say that no, is... you can't. Yeah, when you're trying to get tastings, you know, it's easy to get in with two, no problem. Four, no problem. Six, eh, not too bad. But you get any bigger than six or eight, you get any bigger We've than never that... never had more than eight. Don't it's, get, it can become an eight. issue with trying to get tastings and getting scheduled yeah, be because it's just eight. hard. We've it never really had more is. than eight, but an average of six has been our... Yeah, I, I think six is kind of the sweet spot uh, for, for a group that's going to Napa. So, what 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 have we talked about with going to Napa? We talked about making sure that you know not to stay in Napa. I mean, we love the city of Napa, but you want to stay north just because in planning your trip, uh, you want to come down in the morning, start in the south end of Napa, work your way back north, so you finish up there and you're not fighting that traffic. Because if you don't do that, you will be in traffic. No kidding. To go 20 miles, you'll be in traffic for two hours, and, do and that's not wasted time. the Silverado Trail. Silver. Most of the good, yes. in my opinion, it's my opinion, most of the great wineries are off the Silverado Trail. And so what Chris is... Not off the beaten path 29. What Chris is talking about there exactly. is you have two roads that go north and south. Parallel. Yeah. Parallel. Parallel. One on the west side, which is 29, Highway 29, that goes from Napa all the way up to Calistoga. And then on the east side of the mountain, you have... Uh, the Silverado, Silverado Trail. Trail. And there is, you know, I, I guess for a long time it's been thought that 29 is the, where you're supposed to go. The Silverado Trail has, I mean, that's where Phenomenal. Robinson Inn, all Stelchner, of District. All, all of Stag's Leaf District. District. Joseph, Joseph Phelps, Joseph Horn, Horn, Taylor, Quintessa. Yeah. All of that's on there. Pine Ridge is over there. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All of those are over there. So definitely if you go, I mean, it's kind of hard not to run into it. Somebody's probably going to tell you or you're just going to see it. But we're letting you know right now, hit the Silverado Trail. And, and you might want to come down 29 in the morning. And when you go back up north to your place, go up the Both Silverado Trail. Both trails are fabulous. Yeah. Both they of them. are. I mean, Both, I, of, them. I, I Both of them are. I mean, it. it's awesome. If you've never been to Napa Valley, the easiest way to yeah. describe Napa Valley is it looks like a football field. Right. And both benches on either side are mountains. Yep. That's what it looks like. And they're both really Everything is good. phenomenal. They're both really good. Everything is phenomenal. Our preference is Silverado. Silverado. I mean. Well, it's, it's where we're members of more well, of the. Well, it's where we're members. Of, but it's more where small. our connections are. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's more of the boutiques are over there. More yeah. boutiques. Here's the thing. You're going to go to Napa and you're going to make connections. You're going to make memories. And you that. Is where you plug into yeah, wherever I mean, it is. Doesn't matter where it is. There's you plug no right or the, wrong. In there Napa. is no right or wrong at Napa. No there right really Napa. isn't. Because let me ask you this really question good. as we finish up. If you're gonna recommend to somebody, you need a minimum of how many days to enjoy a trip. If you're going, I mean, if you're going to San Francisco and you just go up for a day, that's one thing. But if you say we're going to Napa, just Napa, the minimum four in Napa, just Napa. Spending time in Napa where you, Three full days. you get up 
I agree with Chris. Three yeah. days. Three okay. full days. Which is why I say four because you know you're you're you've got a half a day on each end. And then two full days in the middle, and that gives you three full days. So you fly in on a Thursday morning. You get up there by, you know, you can land at 9 or 10 because you get two hours from Houston going back. You can get to a nap, a, a winery 11, at 10 a.m. when it opens. Okay. And, and then you're, you can, you you can leave Houston flight. and be at Turnbull by 10 a.m. I will tell it. you. That's what we did. We, we arrived at 9.30, get up there about 11. We didn't get up there quite at 10, but you still have almost a full day that a Thursday, all day, day Saturday, uh, all day Friday, all day Saturday. And then we took your advice. Did kind of a half a day on Sunday, on Sunday and then go back to San Francisco. That's perfect. Yeah. Hey, hey, perfect. So, so I say three full days in Napa would anything, be perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Anything more than that is. So now we and know. Then if you miss something, you just go back. For me. Now we know three full days in Napa is what you want to plan if that's your yeah. first trip. At least three. If you want to stay four or five, yeah. sometimes, you know, there is a line that's too much. But two full, three, two halves. Three days is probably the ideal time to spend in Napa. Right. Um, Three stay in the north part of Napa. Make sure you, you hit the Silverado Trail. Uh, look for, try to get into boutique wineries. And if you're planning a trip, talk to all of your friends who may have wine memberships. Because even if they're not or going, us. or talk us, to us. We're even if like you in. even if they're not going, they may be able to make a call and get you into some tastings that you may not necessarily be able to get into on your own. So take advantage of your friends who are members at some of these wineries. Hit the food up. You know, definitely hit Oakville Grocery. Definitely hit Gott's Roadside. Yes. Um, any other recommendations that you would yeah, a must? Has a really Visa, Visa Tui, Tui is awesome. Tater. Deli. Bouchon Bakery. Bouchon Bakery. Hit those. Absolutely. Um, the other thing I would say is if, if the vineyard itself is having a special on wine, a lot of times, depending on when you go, they might do shipping for a dollar. Let them, if you buy two or three bottles or more, let them, do let them it. ship it. If they don't have a special, then build the case. And you can get either the hotel you're staying at or you can go into Napa or one of the other towns, and they have a lot of uh, mail services that have the – shipping containers the wine boxes and and all the necessary shipping container stuff to ship your wine wherever it needs to go to so if they have a special on shipping a dollar or let something them like, let them do it because that's going to be your cheapest way to do it if they don't build the case get a, a, a you know at least a, a dozen bottles of wine that you want to ship back and if that means it's just you or if it's combining yours with a friend that's with you do it that way be smart in how you ship your wine or back or if you're buying six or twelve from a um, from a winery, go ahead and ship it there and have them do it. Yeah, typically if you buy that much, they're going to give yeah, you a good deal yeah, on don't, shipping. Don't build a case. They're going to give a, a good deal. At a, yeah, don't take a case from a winery. All right. Any other there. tips or suggestions on Napa? Just take have me fun. with you. Yeah, invite us. We'll go with you. So you got four. So we're looking for just two more, and we'll plan <laughs> a trip to Napa. Thanks for listening to. Uh, Food, wine, and whiskey in your own backyard. This is uh, Sandra, Rob, Chris, and Terry saying we we enjoyed you guys joining us, and we'll talk to you soon. And Chris? Open a great bottle. 